Okay, Bob, uh, as we start with lessons, one of the first things I want to go over with you is your posture. Uh, posture is very important when you're playing for a couple of reasons. First of all, it prevents pain or potential in injury. I know a lot of guys have come into me um, with carpal tunnel and with joint problems or hands getting tired. These are things we want to try to prevent uh, by trying to play correctly and also in a relaxed way. The other thing we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about some uh, applied theory to see what you can do over a given set of chords or a known bass line that you know. And lastly, we're going to go over some time. And after that, we're going to talk about how to practice music because it's different than practicing in school. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is the left hand. What you want to do is you want to have the thumb in the middle of the board pointing up. Okay, you want to have the fingers, if you can see me, curved. Okay, and the knuckles, yes. Okay, one way to, to do this is if you put your first finger on the 12th fret A string, then you put your next finger on the next fret, the next finger on the next fret, and so on, the next finger on the next fret. Okay? If you take that hand and you slide down the string, your hand is in the proper position. Great. Now, the whole idea with this, if you notice, you've got a curved wrist, you've got some, you've got some air in here, your hand isn't right next to the board, and what that allows is it allows the hand to move anywhere it wants to move without having to move. If you notice, my hands aren't moving much. All right? And if you can tell from the back, my thumb is not moving very much. This right. allows the hand to be relaxed. You don't have, you, you can stretch if you want, I, or you can shift, but because it's relaxed and where the hand moves, it can go anywhere it wants to go. Okay, great. Now, that's very important. Any questions on that? So far, no. Thumb. This is where Watch my thumb at all times. Right. Okay. Right, you want the left hand to be relaxed. You don't want to be tan tense. Let the, let the shoulders be relaxed. Now, the right hand, the right hand, there are several methods we can talk about. The one I teach is the most common way to play and one you can build off of. The way it is is the thumb goes right on the pickup, whichever pickup you're most comfortable with. Straight. The first finger is straight and goes on the string. Now you want to think about not plucking with the finger, but just like running it, letting it run over the finger. Run over the string, excuse me. Run over the string. You want to think like you're pulling from the wrist. And the reason you do that is first of all you get a fuller sound. Second of all, because you're using a larger group of muscles, you're not as tired, and it's a more forceful sound and a more clear sound. I've had students come to me that have very thin, undirected sound. I get them into this right hand and their, their sound rounds right out because you're running your finger over the string, not plucking it, like you're scratching something. And we'll eventually get into two fingers and three fingers, etc. The next thing is we have to talk about is if you're given a chord or a set of chords uh, and you want to make a bass line, especially if you're in an original project, which I know you're in, where uh, a singer will come to you and say, I've written this song, these are the chords, you have to be able to make a bass line over it. So the things you have to think about are what notes can I use, what do those notes buy me, and what are they going to sound like compared to the chords. So one of the things we're going to look about is we're going to look at things like what I call the root fifth octave system, which is basically the root of the chord, the fifth, which is the fifth note in the scale, and the octave, which is the same note, just higher. These are very important because they're the three most important notes over a chord. After we talk about those, other things we're going to talk about are the arpeggios. Arpeggios are very important because those are the notes of the chord played one at a time. This is the most important thing, I think, as a bass player, because it's playing the exact notes that the chord instruments are playing, and you use them as a bass line over the chords. We're going to learn that, we're going to learn the different kinds of arpeggios, and most importantly, we're going to learn them all over the neck, because one of the things I find most in, uh, prevalent among bass players, especially ones who play already, 
is that they have comfort zones. The things I want to try to break with you is that the comfort zone is the entire board. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about today as part of this overview is we're going to do a lot of work with time. I use the uh, Modern Reading Text of the 4-4 by Louis Belson, which is a great book, originally written for drummers, but it's used to, to study time. Because time is one of those things that needs to be practiced on a regular basis. It's something that's always being refined. It's very tedious, but it applies itself. And what we do with it is we're going to start looking at uh, things like, for instance, we'll look at whole notes right now. Whole notes are four beats long, of pure sound. We're going to talk about the different um, rhythms later on, and the book will take us through that. So what we're going to do is I'll play it first, and then I'll show you. How, how time is approached is very, very strict. You think about it as if that's all that matters. I'm going to use a second fret D string, which is an E note, because the book does. You can use any fretted note. For now, let's use the same one. So this is how you would do it. You wouldn't tap your foot. You can't see my feet but we're not supposed to be tapping our feet. You count out loud because it helps you to learn that much quicker. So if we're doing whole notes, for instance, two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, if you notice, there was no stop of the note, because a whole note is four beats of, of sound with no rest, because we're taking music, we're taking the rhythm exactly as it's written, with no interpretation. Does that make sense? Sure. Can I try that here? Yeah. Put, put your metronome on 50, so you make sure I can hear it. <coughs> and again, we're going to get complex with it, but you have to learn how to do the exercise first. I can hear it. Give yourself a two count, two or three beats before you start. Two, four, three, four, one, two. Accurate as you can. Good. You understand it. Good. So the next time we get together, we'll get into some more complex rhythms. That's fine. So the overview, as you see, we're going to be doing posture, we're going to be doing some theory, we're going to be doing time, and later exercise, and later uh, lessons, we're going to start to talk about ear training, we're going to talk, start talking about voice leading. And sometimes it's not only what you're playing in the chord, it's what you're playing from chord to chord. These are the things that make the bass lines melodic. We'll do some work on walking lines, we'll do work on soloing, we'll do work on slap. And any other things that arise as you're playing, especially if you're playing with other people. What we've talked about were three things today. We talked about posture, we talked about theory, and we talked about time. Now, let's say I had given you three things to study with this. You would have three things. Say you had an hour to study. You'll say, okay, 20 minutes each. That makes sense. But as you practice, as the week goes on, you might find that you need less on one area, more in another. I want you to make that decision before you sit down. Say, okay, today I'm going to do 10 minutes on this, 40 minutes on this, and nothing on the other one as I understand it. Or 10 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, 10 minutes. Hope that added to 60. Um, so you know before you start. Because if not, you'll start on the first thing, work it until you're tired, and then the other stuff doesn't happen. Make the decision before you sit down. I practice between four and six hours every day, and I sit down and make the decision before I start the practice. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. All right. Any other questions? Um, that's pretty much it, and we'll, we can study slap style as I progress more? or Absolutely. The, the problem with slap is I want to get you a little more into time before we do that, because so much with slap is time that we need to discuss that a little bit before we get into it, but yes, absolutely. Okay, that sounds good to okay. me. Okay, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me. Um, and we'll talk next time. Okay, great. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.